Hi guys, what up, Viper here, and today I want to give you guys a new gameplay feature of how to approach the current Alluvium Overworld after the changes of Hollows and Dark Hollows, and there are different ways on how to approach it. I think I'm going to show you guys a super speedrun focused version of how to approach the Overworld and airdrop point farming, essentially with the main goal point and then we'll talk about just like overall gameplay how yeah you just want to play the game maybe for fun or with different goals in mind than just optimizing those airdrop points for your collection okay so because of the raffle the mega alluvial hunt that is going on right of fisto and blazonite being the two main targets going for brightland steps is essentially the main region people are going for the best chances at finding Ophistos and finding blazonites for those big raffle and uh, tickets and big raffle wins Especially when you're in the bubble, just keep checking the heat map, trying to remember, trying to figure out for yourself where you want to go. And then we go here. So here I see this green rock. I tend to personally still shoot them as long as they don't make me um, just like lose movement. So here I see this guy. That is not a good alluvial. I jump over. I just check this alluvial. I see there's a dash. I see it's not hollow. Therefore, I'm not going to capture it. See this, it's a revel, it's not hollow. And well <laughs> uh, it's not supposed to happen, but honestly, it was really, really good because I just immediately teleported back here and I don't have to go down there again. We saw there was nothing hollow, nothing rare, nothing high tier, high stage. We can quickly check here again. Nope, nothing was here. Okay. We saw the heat map was a little bit on this side as well. There's a usually a spawn point here. If there's a lot of stuff, I place a teleporter on top of here. There's a spawn point here. Spawn points didn't happen. There was a plant that I usually collect, but if I do this a super speedrun thing, I'm not gonna do that. Oh, ripens. Honestly, ripens doesn't make the cut for what you want to capture if you're super speedrunning, because Ripeland's full line completion is worth 300 airdrop points. It, it doesn't make the cut. Because you need the Ripeland's, you need the Ripteros, and you need the Riptor. And capture, like going through the fight takes a while. And you have to go through the fight, then you have to throw shards, and you have to capture the Ripeland's, you have to capture a Ripteros, and you have to capture a Riptor. Now, Riptor, you're probably just gonna find, like, without having to win a fight, it's just gonna be there at some point. That's fine. But, yeah, like, going for two fights, R Ripteros and Ripeplants, for 300 adult points, I don't think that makes the cut. I think anything that's, like, less than 500 uh, points worth, uh, you don't wanna capture, really. Some people even have way higher things like that. Some people only wanna go for, like, 2000 plus or something like that. But I think 500 is fine. I think capturing hollow links essentially as the breakpoint. Hollow links or tier 4 stage 1 hollows or better is fine. Otherwise, I feel like I'm just not fighting at all and not really playing the game if I super hardcore hunt only for the super rare ones. But basically, you see how I'm just hitting them a little bit. I just want to see the picture at the top, see if they're hollow or if they're not hollow. Yeah. Then you want to memorize the spawn points. There's a spawn point over there. Go here. Check the fern. Check the spawn points. And this is how you speedrun this. Sometimes there's a spawn point over here. We check the heat map again. Okay. There's a bunch of stuff here. If you play enough, you just start to remember the spawn points. And then it's really easy. Because you only have to shoot somewhere in the direction of them. And then you're just gonna see which Illuvia it is, and you can check is it hollow, is it like a rare high tier, high stage one, or something like that. Oh, yeah, this is essentially how you go about uh, the speedrun version where you are super, super focused on hollows, on dark hollows, on finding really rare Illuvias basically, and you kind of ignore everything else, right? Like this hollow heli for example, I don't think that makes the cut, not for me personally. Hollow heli and cling doll are pretty easy to level up, so that helps a lot in justifying to thinking about going for them or not. Now here, this is also a thing where maybe I could already just be like, okay, I'm gonna teleport back. There's not really many spawn points left here, it takes almost too long to check them. 
uh, I guess then everybody has to kind of figure out their own route, how long it takes to like do these kind of things and so on. I don't dislike taking this bubble up top because there are two spawn points up there and then this cliff and the area below that also have another spawn point sometimes. So I think it's worth the time. Um, but yeah, maybe you have different takes on that. I know some players have different takes. So we check the Lura spawn point here. There's a Kuka. Oh, and they all kind of suck. You see, this run, I've spent zero energy so far, right? And I probably end up spending zero because I didn't find any holo. I didn't find anything really. And that just sometimes happens. All right. So this would be the like super speed runny kind of thing. Uh, you can definitely optimize this down to uh, five minutes if you're really good at movement and don't do some Pepega stuff like I did here. There's a couple spawns on the map that we didn't check, right? There's a few more Alubils on the map, for example, here. Maybe miss something here, maybe miss something here. It's very possible. There's probably one more Alubil on this mountain. But it takes you very long to check those spawn points. You go and check those spawn points, maybe you see five more Alluvials. But yeah, it takes you five minutes. By the time, you can just do an entirely new run. This is the super speedrun thing if you just want to go for high high rarity alluvials and you just ignore everything else now if you want to level alluvials if you want to just do other things in the game maybe you're gonna be a bit different about this so for example if i put my priorities a bit lower and i say okay i'm also gonna shoot plants and rocks that are really valuable even if it takes me a bit of extra time so here for example that green one i can shoot that i can check around here i lost the speed of my jump and everything but okay there's this plant i need that plant i need that plant i use this plant right because you saw how little i was fighting i have a lot of points to spare so i can certainly just get these well the ring nut is not really good but might as well get it get that one get that one so doing all of this is gonna take you a bit longer right Oh, it's funny, the right plants that we let escape respawned over, over here. But yeah, this way you don't run out of consumables essentially. And you don't really run out of shards as well. Because even if I just check what did I obtain now, what I got... Oh, I didn't get resplendent shards, pretty unlucky. I shot a lot of them. But yeah, I got two gumbo troves, right? I got two damage of alluvial ones. I got two tank alluvial ones, two shards, and like the, the smaller ones, right? So if you do that approach, you just combine everything in the runs and you still feel like you, I don't know, have something to do because you just shoot at things and so on. I think this is a bit more of the the fun take, honestly. Um, even, for example, at Heady, you can be like, yeah, I mean, it's not that many airdrop points that I can get for it, but it's a hollow Heady and it's a really good tank if I play this area and I go into fights. So let me capture that Heady and so on and so on. Now, you could be right, but Mr. Viper, this is recorded and you're like a YouTuber. You could just play 100 runs and show us the coolest and most rare one and so on. I'm like, I don't know. I, I don't want to give you guys like, this is the rarest thing that I found and it took me like 200 runs to, to get there. And then you guys going to be like, I never see that. That really sucks. So the reality of doing this oftentimes is you just have a lot of runs that are, yeah, you just like sometimes hit nothing. Like it is what it is. It is what it is. It can be a bit, uh, I don't know. I don't want to say depressive. That sounds too rough. But it can be a bit discouraging if you have a couple of runs and you find entirely nothing. And yeah, and the speed thing certainly can be the case. That's why I like to at least shoot some of the consumables and things like that. And I always feel like I have gotten something out of the run. Even though it slows me down with the amount of runs that I can make. And I have to get better at shooting as well. It's a cling. And there's usually one to do spawn down here. Uh, tier 1 stage 1 holo does not make the cut for me. I think those are only 75 airdrop points worth. Going through combats takes pretty long. Because you have multiple animations. You have to set up your team. You have to win. And then you have to throw shards at the enemy team. Like a combat for me is about 3 minutes. And I don't... Three minutes speaking on, well, one of these runs takes you maybe less than 10 for sure, right? 
if I'm, I don't know, on a good day, on a good heat map, it's gonna be like a five minute speed run. Well, it's not a good day, a good heat map if I have uh, zero fights. But yeah, just checking the map, maybe like five minutes. And if a fight is about three minutes each. So preferably you have multiple fights, but it doesn't always happen. So you go here, there are two spawn points here. There's one here. Cinch. I think it is really sad. That is one thing that I don't like about the... That I feel like on the feeding side is like not cool. That I'm like, I don't even wanna capture a stage 2 tier 4. I feel like those are pretty rare and pretty cool alluvials. But they just need too many resplendent shards to be captured. The fight takes pretty long. And even if I complete the whole line, it's like only 600 points. I feel like it's kind of sad that it feels not worth to go for them. It does have the four spawn points on that uh, area down there. Then there's one spawn point here. I tend to check this and then make the jump up here. And there's one spawn point up here as well. So we check the six spawn points. You can go up here, but I tend to just check what kind of alluvial is there. Oh, that is uh, a foe, I think. Okay. A foe, I'm, I'm willing to spend my time getting up there. Preferably, you uh, get here from the higher point. Like, you just start uh, from this point up here. Oh, there's another foe, it's a slap, and... Oh, I didn't see that correct then. You can see this area is red, so I like to teleport here, and then go to the big mountain and play from down there. So you can do here and usually you have to take the bubble up here that's why i place the teleporter i can just start here you see there's nothing up there there's nothing big usually there's one there and one there but this time they didn't spawn want to do it over here nope not this time there's one spawn point here it's only a riptor there's a spawn point like here ish it's a gorilla and then there are a couple of spawn points here apon Arcane links, another arcane links, none of them are hollow, spawn points here. Well, oh, nothing more here, might as well die for the quick respawn. Now, having this remembered would be better, but okay, I'm gonna check this area and then eventually you can check the last one as well. Oh, uh, I think I did hit it and it didn't look like a hollow. But yeah, even if it is. A hollow i'm not even gonna get for that so i would only go for dark hollow clings and those are very easily visible so i would have probably seen that one spawn point here nothing there spawn point here nothing there this was not like a really red area of the map so it makes sense that we don't find anything here and there are a lot of spawn points on this side of the map as well i don't actually remember if the heat map was showing them so yeah, here I could be min-maxing a bit more if I would have cared more to look at the heat map, but it's kind of like the, the camera effect. Uh, talking, doing multiple things at the same time. This is more like a live stream content than almost like a video at this point. Yeah, this is like how like a, a overworld run in a, on Twitch live stream would look like for me. I think at this point also we spend too much time checking these like single locations where I don't even know for a fact that there is something. But, because I am now at this higher up spot, I can go check this area, which has some spawn points to it. And we saw that it was uh, red on the map as well. I think there are only two or three spawns here. So it's again, this is at the point where I could have already teleported back and started a new run and go for the easy bubble into that big plateau and just check those check those areas but i don't know i think that like super speedrunny feeling it takes it makes the game too speedrunny for me which i do just enjoy playing the game a bit as well so i like to do this i like to shoot at some plants and rocks it feels kind of fun but yeah now we can check this area last can just go to the edge here 
run into that edge so you get immediately stopped and your energy immediately starts regenerating that's another like quick movement kind of tip mirror is here oh there's a blotto oh it's not a blotto it's only a crunk oh crunk not hollow wink not hollow yeah you can you see these runs you will have streaks of you just hit nothing and you will have streaks of you just get really quick uh, a lot of really rare alluvials that is how i speed running play the game at the moment if i just want to go and farm the other point things and i do like a little bit of a middle ground where i still hit some plants and i still hit some some ores essentially ace i think i've never seen a hollow ace so far it's kind of sad oh there's an a door is it gonna be hollow it would be my first hollow tier 5 nope I don't even think they're capturing uh, stage 1 tier 5s is worth it anymore because essentially 13 of them that you have to level up as well now leveling them is not that difficult especially in Edo but you need to capture 13 of them for one Edo, one Edorito, one Adorius so that gives you 4000 points for 14 that's like roughly 300 per I think 300 per is not really worth it also, they do need a lot of resplendent shards to be called. And yeah, we need to get 13 of them. Oh, let me check this here. Ripter and yeah. There's only two more spawn points here. I didn't check the heat map super precisely. So I don't even know if they are here. Oh, a greater gorilla and a wink. Okay, there's nothing here. And this would be the end of the second run. Now, I could have been a bit quicker in these runs, but this is essentially how you go about speedrunning this. And this is also how you go about most of the map. Because I think this part of the map pretty much never spawns anything. I, I don't know why. The heat maps are always pretty similar to this. Uh, I rarely check this mountain. You can, from this mountain, if there's nothing here, you can jump over to this mountain. That certainly works pretty easily. Or if you're, I don't know, in this cave up here, you can go from here over here as well. Or you can just take the bubble, like depending on just what paths you are, where you're walking and so on. Then again, the main thing is you kind of just check this area, this area, and this area. This is, I don't know, the really easy to check one. And then this one as well. Everything else kind of takes a lot of time until you can see all these spawn points. So if you're super, super speed running it again, just check this this here and check this and then the rest is like i don't know here obviously this is like pretty easy if it's spawned down here but then when it comes to the mountains it becomes a bit harder so i hope this was interesting maybe i don't know helps you with some some spawn points how to move how to act and so on if you want to know more about the movement and so on uh, just check out the uh, Check out the overworld guides that I have on the game. A lot of them cover movement. A lot of these shorts even talk about movement, so you don't have to watch an entire video. And appreciate you guys hanging out and watching. If you're new to Illuvium, you just want to start playing the game or whatever, uh, please do so via the ref link thing in the in the description of the video. Appreciate the, uh, the support. And yeah, appreciate you guys hanging out. See you in the next one.